tools are there so that we can be the great tinkerers of life. That's what we'll talk about today. I am a champion of one notch above mediocrity, Adam Savage. Today, we're going to continue our conversation about the book, Every Tool's a Hammer, Life is What You Make It, by Adam Savage. Ken, he is one of the Mythbusters, fantastic show, where they try things out. They try experiments to see what actually happens. And his book, while it's talking about him being a tinkerer, is also about we're all creators, regardless of what jobs we're doing. We're all creators in how we present things. And here are tips that we can become better at what we are trying to do, whatever that is. So we'll pick up the conversation where he talks about deadlines. And he said deadlines are the fix to all sorts of problems if we get paralyzed by analyzing things too long. Or we have perfectionism problems, procrastinations. When you have deadlines, it will force you into making decisions. It will force you into moving because you want to get things done. And so while sometimes I think we look at hobbies and other activities we're doing as, I don't want a deadline. I'm building something for fun. In sense, it's actually going to help us do whatever it is we're going to do. And he said, all these bad tendencies are just the bane of the existence of someone who is trying to make something. And if you're looking to mitigate it, deadlines are the way to go. It's helping you. It's helping the process. And it's causing you to, he says, quote, prune decision trees. Because it creates a limit, a boundary we have to fit inside of it. It also helps us with a ton of excuses. You know, we're always like this. And this is, I think, again, why I was having problems as a kid. I don't know what to make. I don't know how to make it. What if I screw up? But suddenly, if we have a deadline, we're giving ourselves, we have to move. We have to act. And we have to come up with solutions. I think he's right about this. It really helps everything do better. I think oftentimes about how come I never have problems with podcasting. I have no problems with it at all. I don't even have to put it on my calendar. I don't have to create a project plan. I don't have to do any of the things I do at work to podcast. And I think because it has a deadline. Every week, podcast has to issue. So I have a built-in limit of when I have to do things. It helps me in so many ways get things done. It may feel burdensome at times because, oh no, I'm going on this trip. I have a customer visit. I have to do these things. Ooh, and there's a podcast. But that regular deadline makes everything better. And he says that the deadlines are even more important when we're working for ourselves. That's when we really get stalled. While we're thinking too hard, we're not doing enough things, and we get lost. And he says, quote, This is the maker's version of the end of the world question. If the world was going to end tomorrow, what would you do today? And he said, for people who are makers or creators, they're going to want to create that final amazing thing. He says that it'll show us what the nature of own selves are, what our projects have been, and what the point of our work is. And when we have no limitations, when we have endless time and We don't have any reason to get anything done for any particular reason. We don't work on it. We don't impact our lives. We don't get moving on it. And sometimes, old Jill back in college, if I had a deadline, I would wait until that weekend before something was due and work really hard to get it done. If we can learn through small steps and, and coming up with the plan and the checklist, we can start moving in a better way and getting the projects done slowly giving ourselves time to think and plan, and we'll be happier for it. And he says in the end, if, quote, the product embodies 10 or 12 of your original goals, then each one of them is perfectly suited for the role they fill and essential to the project. He talks a little bit about perfectionism. We've done podcasts on that before, but he says that deadlines for him are the only ways he can get things done, particularly when he feels like he's being a bit too perfectionist. You can't get tied up in everything. You may want something to be amazing. And maybe because of the deadline, 
you'll look for ways of not cutting the quality, but doing something that's maybe a little bit easier using a material or a topic. If you're a podcaster or writing a book, that's a little bit easier for you to tackle in that short time period so that you can get your project done. And he says that by giving himself what he calls the ticking clock, it gave him the skill to solve complex problems while still focusing on what this project was supposed to be. And that's where he says this particular list is valuable because you'll look at your list and see what you can still do or what you can't do. And the deadline, as it comes through, will help you fine tune what's really important. I'm doing another podcast coming up in the beginning of the year, which is going to go through a chapter a day of the Bible. And I found myself, well, I want to research this and I want to look at that and maybe I should get a theology degree. And you know what? I can't do that. I'm going to start in January. I can't go get a theology degree before January. So the deadline is fine tuning my own thoughts about this too. He then suggests drawing things out. We talked about checklists and checklists are very good for words and lists and things that you have to do and shop for. But this is more diagramming things out. And it's amazing. He can draw. And I can see when he was working on Mythbusters, when he can draw, it helps him show the project of how he thinks it's going to look. It gives him some sorts of guidelines about how it's supposed to be. I know when he would show Jamie what he had in mind, a diagram meant everything. He would be able to explain exactly what it is that's going on, not just maybe some idea that has no sense and balance, but a diagram would explain things in fewer words so that you knew what to do. He admits he's been drawing his whole life, and I am not someone who can draw anything. So when he says, if you can draw, do that. But here's the thing, is that there are all sorts of apps out there. I'm a technical person. I can tell you that. That will help you do diagrams. It will help you draw boxes. You don't have to draw everything so it's a realistic image. You could just put the layers in inside of a like work box, you know, so that you first it comes here and then it goes over here. And if you can't draw, there's all sorts of technologies and ways to just make it simple Get your ideas out there because what you're trying to do is get all the thoughts out of your head that are floating around and get them into a more concrete way. And so if you need a tool, there's plenty of them out there. You're welcome to email me. My email will be in the show notes and I can help you find a tool. But sometimes it's a matter of diagramming. Sometimes it's just a matter of getting something down on paper. And when you can see it, sometimes it also shows you gap. I gave the example a few weeks ago about how we felt like something in our project plan at work was missing. And so I used Visio, I diagrammed the whole thing out, and suddenly we realized there's this big hole in our process. We have no one checking this one thing. And because we diagrammed it, we were able to see what was missing from our plans. And it helped us figure out something crucial we needed to do says that we also have to give up on our tolerance of things just going wrong. You know, whether we're very prideful and we don't like things to go wrong because it makes us look bad, or we feel insecure and like, oh, I can't get things done right. Or maybe we lose interest if things aren't working correctly, or we <laughs> break our saw bit or, you know, crack our pencil in half. And we have to start getting over that. It's about you not losing interest in whatever it is you're building. And sticking to it so that you're not going to get mad or <laughs> lose your will, you know, to do this project or get so confused you can't keep go on. But in a sense, we are at what he says, quote, a truly golden age for creativity. Everything you want to do, you can find a way of doing right now. I couldn't have done a podcast back when I was a kid. I used to pretend that I was Saturday Night Live and doing the fake news and I had a little tape recorder and I would record my own fake funny news. I don't know how funny it was, but that was the end of it. I have a tape recorder. There's nothing I can do with it. I can't broadcast it. I don't have my own radio station. I don't have a place to put it. I could let my friends hear it and that was kind of fun and we would make up fake news stories just to be funny, but that was the end of it. We live in a time where you can have podcasts, where you can get your art out there, 
whatever you're creating, you can sell things on Etsy. You can put a whole website together of your art and people can admire it. It's really this crucial time of who knows what you're going to create. What amazing things are you going to do? I thought what was funny is I was listening to someone talking about kind of the internet age and how every child was going to be a creator and everyone was going to pick up and build something amazing. Everyone will be a blogger uh, and have a biography out there, the story of their lives. And what they found is that that wasn't necessarily coming true with the internet. People, for the most part, were just consuming. They were just watching TikTok videos and they were just watching things. And so even though you have the potential to create darn near anything right now and find other people who want to create that thing with you, people just aren't doing it. And so this is the call for creativity to go out there and do the things you want to do. But he talks about that if things are going to go poorly, he says that the tech world has all sorts of um, phrases about fast fail or move fast and break things, fail, and then learn from it. And that's always been a great way of learning something, is that you try it. And if it doesn't go so well, you do it better the next time. And you try again, and each time you get better and better. Part of it, he says, quote, learn by doing poorly, building little models and seeing what goes wrong and what goes right, or building whatever it is you're going to build and say, hey, you know what? I don't like how that worked. I'm going to do it a little bit better the next time. Back at the beginning of the pandemic, when there were no masks anywhere, I was caring for some people who were older and my family too, and no one could get their hands on any masks. So I have a sewing machine. I also have quilting material. I took all the material I was going to take out and eventually make into a quilt and started building masks out of it. And I looked at some YouTube videos about how to sew masks, and I found a few patterns I thought looked promising. I tried them out. Some of them did not work at all. They didn't fit at all. They didn't fit anyone's face at all. And then I started finding, okay, so I need something a little bit more fitted on the side. Watch another video. Okay, that one is more fitted. And I kept this process of iteration going. So eventually I had a mass that fit perfectly. But still, I was terrible at sewing them because I hadn't sewn anything in ages. But you know what? My first 10 masks were pretty terrible. But my next 10 masks were okay. And then suddenly I was making very good masks. It started working out. I ended up sewing like 140 of them because I got better and better at it. And I think that's what he's talking about here. You're going to be terrible at it at first. But here's the thing is that you're going to make mistakes. And that is just the way it goes. It's the way all of it goes. And if you think anyone did anything properly the first times they did it, Start looking at some of actors and actresses' first movies or TV shows. Pretty terrible at it. Sometimes they're downright awful. They get better at it. It's always why I never try to give up on TV shows that are brand new because they eventually, probably after three, four episodes, get their groove. And you're going to get your groove, whatever it is you're trying to do. Someone even told me on this podcast, just start, be awful, so that you can be better sooner. And then once you're better, it'll be amazing. I asked her, should I go back and record my first podcast and make them better now that I know how to do it better? No, don't do that. Just keep moving forward. It's my advice to you. And then that's when things get better too, is when you start doing each try. The first mask stunk. The second mask got better. The first time I made a quilt, it was pretty awful. Second time was even better. Each generation gets better to the point where suddenly you're a craftsperson or you're someone who's doing something properly. You're able to create podcasts. You're able to create speeches, write books, whatever you're trying to do. You get better at it each attempt you get. If you try and if you put the right tools in front of you and you make an effort to get better. He says, too, we should know our tolerances, you know, that if you get easily frustrated, just give yourself permission to fail. Understand this is going to get messy in whatever way it gets messy. My first podcast, like I said, I recorded it 17 times and it took me hours to edit each podcast. Better now. I speak better, but I'm also better at editing. So it always gets a little bit better. Each iteration, as long as you're dedicated to trying to improve, you'll get better. 
He says, too, he likes to go slowly. And he says he's very slow. And then there's that military phrase where it says, slow is smooth and smooth is fast. Meaning if you go very fast, but you're always making mistakes, you're slowing yourself down. But if you are slow and careful and methodical and you're not going back, you'll be faster. I notice sometimes even when I'm editing the podcast, I'll get caught up with ADD kind of things and I'll be editing the podcast and I suddenly realize, oh, I'm not paying attention. So I'll back it up and I'll listen again. I'm making it self excruciatingly painful for myself because if I would just focus for 17 minutes, I will get this done. And that's where he says, just go slow, very slowly, and be careful about it. Actually pay attention and think about what you're doing. And he says, sometimes you just don't even know where your journey is going to end. You don't know what you're going to say or what you're going to do or what you're going to talk about. And that happens with creative things all the time. I might have mentioned that my friend and I had a competition where we were going to write a science fiction story. And I started writing this story. And at some point, it took on a life of its own. The story did not go the direction I intended the story to go. And that's really funny because I'm the one writing it. And I think podcasts, too, are a little bit like that. Sometimes I'll go through and talk about something. And as I'm talking about it, I don't write down everything word for word. I have an outline. And suddenly I realize this isn't going the direction I thought it was going to go. So if you don't have a plan in place, you don't know where you're going or what you're going to do in the final end, it's helpful. It makes you more creative. He said that instead, you're going to have a journey. You're going to go in a direction. You have a compass. And if you give yourself a little bit of room for error, mistakes, some on-the-spot ideas, you're going to have an epic journey in front of you. Maybe sometimes you have to take a turn or turn around, but it'll get you there. I don't know what I thought about when I was doing this podcast, but suddenly somewhere around 10 episodes in, I got my groove and I understood what this podcast was going to be. I think that's how every creative aspect is, is that once you start doing something, you get, oh, that's what this is going to be. Same thing with writing a fiction book or same, same thing if you're going to write a blog. Eventually, things start taking on a life of its own and you fall into what this is really meant to be. And instead of making it feel like you're going the wrong direction, you might just be taking on a new journey. And so don't be so upset in your head or this was my plan and it's not going according to plan. Instead, try to think about the potential. He gives a quote of Francis Bacon, who was a genius guy back in, (laughs) I forgot what year. But said about painting, one has an intention, but what really happens comes about in working. Someone who even paints a portrait thinks they know what they're going to paint. And until it's done, they don't really know. The other quote he gave was from Kurt Vonnegut. Travel plans gone astray are dancing lessons from God. Meaning that we're going to have the most joy when we don't really know exactly where we're going to go. And that when we keep making every weird turn, doing every strange thing, we'll have art that is truly our own because it came from our experience. But in the end, this is the point of being creative, coming up with your own solutions, your start point, your end point, what you're going to create. This is why I think in the end, ChatGPT and all the other AIs are going to help us do amazing things. They can never replace our process of creativity of going down the left side instead of the right side and taking this turn instead of that turn. Someone said once that AI will be able to create a song that sounds like the Beatles, but it'll never evolve to be the Beatles 10 years down the road about adapting as an artist or changing as a person. And while this podcast goes on, it's all me and it's all of us and what the things that we're trying to learn and do And there's no way I even know what it's going to look like in 10 years. So you just have to keep moving forward and doing what you figure out and what you feel like doing. And he says, quote, it's good to have a North Star to move towards. The fact is that we're not knowing where things are going to end up. But he says, quote, no amount of ideation, whiteboarding, storyboarding, gaming out options, 
will show you your true destinations. You will only know them when you arrive. Wow, that is a sentence. So my challenge to you is try to diagram out one project you're working on. Doesn't have to be pretty. It can be stick figures. It can be boxes around words. But try creating a flowchart, a diagram of what your end product is going to look like. Heck, you could even cut out photos that you get off the internet and print off and put them on a foam board. But see if visualizing your end goal can help you figure out where you're going next and help you go whatever North Star direction you're trying to go. All right, everyone, thanks so much. I appreciate you listening to the podcast. Please remember to always email me at jill at startwithsmallsteps.com and tell me what you think. Tell me if there's a topic you would be like or if you're looking for a tool or a book to help you get out of a rut. Maybe we could even talk about it on this podcast, but I'll give you suggestions. And remember, our walk in becoming a creator starts with small steps.